This is the Pepsi camera. I don't know the official name for it, but I found this guy on Facebook Marketplace for 30 bucks. You know, I had seen Negative Feedback's video on the Budweiser camera, and I'd seen Grainy Day's video on the Budweiser camera, and I was just perusing Facebook Marketplace seeing if I could find anything, and this Pepsi camera popped up. And so when I saw it, and I saw that it was selling for relatively cheap, I thought, okay, I'm gonna buy it just to see if it works. So that's what I did. I got some Fuji Superior 400, popped a roll in this, and took it out for some photos in my local town, which there's not much to shoot here, but I did the best I could. All right, we've got a roll of film successfully in the Pepsi can. Let's go test it out. When I had watched other videos on this camera, everyone was saying there's a lot of headroom. So every shot I took, I angled slightly down to try to compensate, and it actually worked really well. When I was taking photos, I was trying to get the main subject that I wanted in the middle right at the top of the frame line, and that seemed to work great for getting it right in the middle of the frame. So if you get the Pepsi or the Budweiser camera, just shoot down a little bit to actually get things where you want them in the frame. Shooting with this camera was actually a lot nicer than I thought it would be. It's so satisfying to just pop it open, take a shot, snap it closed, and winding your film is also so satisfying on this camera. The only thing I really didn't like about this camera was the shutter button. Uh, when I was actually going to take photos, I was trying to maneuver all around the front of the camera to find where the shutter button was because it wasn't raised up. It's flush with the body, which is great, but it made it tough to actually take the shot when I wanted to take the shot. Overall, this camera really surprised me. I was expecting incredibly soft shots, and there were a lot of shots that were incredibly soft but there were some that were really sharp, sharper than my Minolta cameras even. I can't tell you why some were in focus or some were incredibly sharp. I think it's just kind of luck of the draw, but for being a test roll through this camera, I'm really pleased with a lot of the, the photos that I got. I don't know, I think it'd be kind of fun to take this to a different city or maybe even to a fashion shoot and get some photos on this to see how it could compare because at the end of the day, this is a point and shoot camera that's not meant to be high quality. All in all, if you can find one of these cameras for relatively cheap on Facebook Marketplace or eBay, go ahead and pick it up, put a roll of film through it to make sure it works. When I got mine, I asked the guy, hey, does this work? Has it been tested? And he told me yes, but I, I really wasn't gonna trust it because it is a plastic camera that is from 1998. So had to do my own tests and I'm happy to report that it turned out great. I was planning on selling it if I didn't like the way the photos looked, but I think it's one I'm gonna keep for my collection and just kind of have on display. I just think it's so cool to look at and I'm really happy to have one that's in awesome condition. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you liked the photos, drop a like down below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Uh, I also shot a roll of film on my Minolta Maxim 3000. So the next video, I'm gonna be going over those photos and might even compare some of them to the photos I got with this camera because I actually took both cameras out at the same time 
and was taking similar shots to see how they compare. So if you wanna see that video, subscribe, stick around, and I'm thankful that you were willing to watch this video. And also, this is just the sickest vintage camera that I own for sure. Until next time. Thank you.